You're very welcome along. It is the Dublin Racing Festival. It's the Star Sports Zoom Room. And uh, if you're excited about the racing at the weekend, you're not as excited about Davey, as Davy Russell because two of his rides to start the festival are top, top notch. And we're going to get to them very shortly. We're with Bill Esdale as well. And do remember our pipped at the post offer. If you're beaten in any of the ITV races, a load of them at Leopardstown by half a length or, or less in second, you get your money back straight into the first race. The Nathaniel Lacey Solicitor's Novice Hurdle. How excited are you? about this hollow games Dean Russell yeah sure he, you know he, he's a lovely horse he he, he he done everything we asked of him until Nace I suppose he was a, a little bit uh, disappointing in Nace so he'd have to improve from that obviously the horse to finish in front of him he he um, meets again in um, Grand Jury Grand- yeah so um, he'll have to be better than he was in Nace anyway why should he reverse the form in your eyes Ah, uh, well, it's you know, it's a different race course. It's it's a step up and trip. There's any number of reasons he could reverse the form, but you know, they may suit Grand Jury as much as they suit. They might might suit my lad, but um, my lad's in good form now. He's in good all order, so we're looking forward to him. Think the triple suit? I don't think it'll inconvenience him. He he showed he won a couple of very slowly run races, um, and showed bit of pace and he won over 2-6 already so there's no reason why he shouldn't You can obviously back him at 2-1 to one with Star Sports Billy, you can back his Conqueror Grand Jury at 5-1, to one. what do you want is only 9-2 to two, despite the uh, Paul, fact that Paul Townend is obviously riding Braun there is um, the chance that that horse might improve as well um, it, to me this looks an open up race Yeah, wide open race um, definitely respect Davies, Hollow Games um, Braun is interesting. We don't know too much about Braun, um, but we know that Paul Townend likes him, so that makes him uh, very appealing. Uh, the one I would kind of throw a chance to is the other Gordon horse, Manella Kruner. Um, Davy, just just a, just a word on him. Am I mad to half fancy him? No, he, he doesn't show much at home. Um, he's very unassuming horse, but uh, really, really pleases you every time. You know, he the day he got beat was still a very, very good run. And um, he, he showed his well-being the last day by winning in Punchestown. Um, he'll need to step up from it, but I think there's actually loads in him. You know what I mean? He, mm. he, um, he, the step up to two six is a big plus for him as well. You know, in better company. Mm. Yeah. Would be a very highly regarded horse as well, Bill. Yeah, I just thought he was. I just thought he was the interesting one there because, um, you know, he was so good over three miles last day. This will be a, a proper test, and I, I just thought he was. Interesting at six or seven to one or whatever he was each way. Straight into Davy's next ride, Field Door. Davy, my idea of the bet of the day at 11 to 8. I, I don't see what this horse has done wrong. I know Vauban's form has been greatly boosted by your own stable mate. Um, am I wrong? 11 to 8 in the second. Oh, well, again, Field Door is very hard to assess at home because he's he's always to the back of the pack. You know what I mean? He doesn't work well, but every time we pull him out, he, he just pleases the whole time. Um, I suppose the one thing about him is he would enjoy um, slow. Well, he's better on, he's better on slower ground, um, but he can handle any any conditions aren't going to be an excuse. Um, but you just think that this this is you know there's loads of strength and depth to this race as well, and this will be his toughest test. So um, he'll have to put his best foot forward to account for all of them. How would he compare to the Pied Piper? Uh, they're quite different at home. Um, Pipe Piper is, he shows an awful lot of pace and he's always on the bride. You're always trying to settle the Pipe Piper, whereas um, Field Door, you're, he's very simple to ride. You just throw the reins on his neck and he goes whatever speed everything else is going, you know. He's he's kind of been like a more of a national hunt horse in your quintessential juvenile. I just love the way he goes about his business, kind of almost half lazy, but willing to do what you want, finds a bit for pressure. I, I make him even money at best here, to be honest. Yeah, he was bought as a store, like, you know, so he is a national hunt horse. He's, he was bought as a store in France and Joey Logan has done a very good job with, for, with him for the owners. So, um, you know, he, he comes across as a store and he rides like that type of horse. He, he doesn't ride like your typical flat horse that was trained for mm. jumping into the bridle, whereas this fellow is all gradual with him, but he's very pleasing to ride and he gives you everything he has, you know. That's the key thing, Bill. Is he better than he stayed with Because that's obviously the Vauban form and Vauban has a tongue tie on for the first time. Yeah, interesting race. I mean, Davies said everything that needs to be said about Fieldor. His two best runs have come on soft ground. Um, 
And I think it was his class that got him out of trouble on good ground. And, you know, he's just a horse that wants soft ground and, and, and we don't know how how much water they've put on in terms of what difference it's going to make in the ground. But this is going to be, like David says, a, a, a tough test on conditions that probably aren't ideal for him. A bit more rain would definitely help him, but his class may get him out of trouble. <laughs> I, th I think Vauban is the big danger. Um, he, irrespective of the Pied Piper form, I think it was a shock for everyone that Pied Piper beat him. And he got very close to Pied Piper. And, I, and I'm guessing that there would have been a breathing related issue that they probably think they straightened out with a tongue tie. So he's bound to take a step forward on the back of a run and the back of having his tongue tied. Um, I think he's going to be very hard to crack in this, but I'd love to see Phil Dorr win. But um, I think where, wherever Davey looks, there'll be Vauban with him. It promises to be a great race. Vauban impressed in defeat the last day and onto the third. Riviere Detel did the exact same thing the last day behind, behind, behind Fernie Allo, who obviously doesn't oppose here because um, he's been injured and he misses Cheltenham and so forth. Blue Lord, he's stable, mate, takes his chance here. Staying with you, Bill, I just spoke to you about this before we came on air. I think you said Riviere Detel was 11 to 4. She's actually gone in 5 2 now with Star Sports, but she pulled miles clear of Curse of Bleem, who to me is actually a good horse. She gave a proper, proper race with Fernie Allo, and again, she's in receipt of raid from Blue, Blue Lord. Yeah, I mean, we'll find out more about her from Davey in a second, but I like her on the basis that you know, Willie's throwing three, you know, th he's throwing Blue Lord, he's throwing Hoton Kalor and St. Sam at the race. And, you know, I said to you before we started filming, it reminds me a bit of Aidan O'Brien when he goes looking for a derby horse when, for, when he's got three of them. And there's the old adage, if you've got three, you might not have one. And um, I just think they'll all, they'll all ha have their work cut out to reel in River to tell. She gets the mayor's allowance. Um, so she's getting nine pounds from the top ones and and, and set a seven pounds from uh, Houghton Kalora and St. Sam. But, you know, she's had loads of experience over fences. She's got such a good attitude. She's so tough. I just think it's going to be a very good one to, to pass her. And, and, you know, the feeling, I think, was that Fernie Hollow was the standout contender and, and he's gone. And and Rivia to tell really ruffled his feathers. And he might if he's going to if she's going to get beaten here it'll be because there's another Fernie Hollow amongst the Mullins team. I'm not sure there is another Fernie Hollow there, and I think she's the safest proposition. What do you make of it, Davey? Yeah, I suppose as the year progresses, her um, her, allow her allowances get shorter, yeah. as in after the year, getting a lot of weight. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, she got, uh, I think, £13 from Fernie Hollow, and now she's down to £9 and uh, uh, 7 and and £9. Pounds. Uh, to Blue Lord and the rest um, she's very good she's as tough as nails uh, she wears her heart in her sleeve she goes out she jumps she runs you know she's one way of going and that's forward and very quick She, when she's on song she jumps excellent and the one thing that I thought might catch her out is you know around Leopardstown between the last two to the line and to be fair to her, she she put it up to Fernie Hollow. She made him work. Um, and for me, that form is probably the best form in the book. Um, for her not for her not to win, I think you know either the weight catches her, or 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 some other for some other reason. She seems to me to have the best form and is the best horse in the race. Strong words from Davia and taking on three Mullins horses that aren't actually easily split despite uh, jockey bookings, obviously, given the indication that Blue Lord is atop them. The Gold Cup, Davy, 315. Um, I was looking at this race throughout the week. I picked holes in a load of these horses and I actually came to the opinion that Conflated could outrun his odds. He's ridden by 1D in Russell. Has he any sort of a chance? Of course he has. He's a talented horse. 157. Um, he all, I don't think he's ever run a bad race. Uh, he was unlucky... We, we felt maybe he might win a Kerry National. He was unlucky to, to, to pair company with Jack early on. And uh, he came back and won well the last day. Um, looked to say he'd win the Gold Cup at the start of the year. You wouldn't imagine he would. But um, just know he's in there now with his chance. Uh, they're going to go plenty quick enough. There's a lot of pace in the race. So um, maybe more so to pick up the pieces rather than actually go and win it, you know. Galvin's not running here, but uh, was he one of your best rides of all time at Christmas? I was very pleasing. Um, everything went to plan with him, and I suppose Gordon has to take the credit there. He's done such a marvelous job with him, uh, but he's improved away the whole time, and you know he does like to come to be fresh. And we were actually worried that it probably could have been one of the closest back-to-back -back runs yeah. for him, um, and he coped with it well. So hopefully now he can um, he can go on and, and prove his worth in Cheltenham.
have to say, I love his chance to goal cup, Bill. Just looking at this, Manila Indo, obviously, he's massive questions to answer. Asterian for Lawrence, serious doubts about him going this way. Look at the likes of Delta work. His career just hasn't gone on at all. Frodo, you know, is, is the track going to suit him necessarily? Will he be taken on up front? Janadil, for me, doesn't get three miles. I think there are a lot of negatives here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, um, I think Davey's got a huge chance. I've, I actually tipped him in the paper, conflated. I think, 30, wow. I think 33s is a massive price, primarily because you touched on it. Asterian for launch, we've got to see him finish a race. Silos Emery, does he stay? You know, I'm not sure he does. Delta Work hasn't shown much pieces. You're, you're reaching first time pieces to get him back. Frodon is Frodon, and, and you know, he's, he's, he's favourite on the basis of, of, of a good, good travelling performances to Ireland in the past. Janadil's question marks. I mean, Kenboy is probably the safest proposition. I think he is. Last year's, last year's winner and second the year before uh, was close up in that very good Savills that you were discussing before. Um, and Manila, Manila Rindo, you're scratching, scratching your head a bit with him. He's got to, got to bounce back massively. So um, I thought Kenboy the safest, but probably conflated each way at 33s was the one. Just your last ride of the day on day one, Davey, is Dallas to Pictons, uh, who's, I didn't, again, didn't think was a hopeless case in what's admittedly a competitive renewal of the 245. Yeah, he's a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde character. Um, uh, like yourself. I <laughs> 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 got really well with him in Punchestown. He ran uh, in a similar contest, but um, this, this, the strength and depth to this race is, you know, from top to bottom, any, any one of them could win it. Um, I think the handicapper is going to be rubbing his hands, turning into straight to be any amount of us with a chance. Um, look, if Dallas Big Time puts his best foot forward, there's no doubt he'd be competitive. I have to say he'd win it. would be a bit of a bit of a stretch. Just before you go, Davy, the, the the bumper as well. Our Anton Ellis the card, seven previous winners in the bumper. Obviously, the unbelievably well-bred Facile Vega is going to be favourite here. I don't think he'll have it all his own way at all. What do you make of the Elliott team? Yeah, um, it's what you know. It's what unites us is a, a lovely horse. He's never uh, failed to impress us at home. Um, if anything, in, in Navin, he, he wasn't as impressive as we thought he might be. Um, he's improved since then. But, you know, for me, as bumpers go, this is really is outstanding kind of stuff, you know. Um, Fasal Vega was, was very well touted. Um, Embassy Gardens, the same. The big Dion is probably the horse coming from, you know, over here, Peter Fahey's not as a small uh, yard, mm. but he's just probably not as regular name as William Mullins and Gordon Elliott. And that horse has been ultra impressive all year. Uh, he, he actually went to start his career in Ross Common where he, he, he didn't run. And then he went down and, and has been very impressive on both his starts. What's the pick of your rides? Ah, sure. I've looked, I'm looking forward to. We'd need improvement from um, from um, um, Hollow Games and Fieldor if he's just keeps going the way he's going. You know, he, he doesn't really have to do a whole lot different. Just turn up in good form and the rest not be as good as what we they hope they are. Can't wait for it, Bill. The last word to you. Yeah, well, I hope, I hope it begins with a Davy Russell double. That'll be the D in the Dublin Racing Festival. Davy, Davy like two from two for the first two races. That'll be good. Yeah, and do remember the pipped at the post offer. If you're second beaten half a length or less, you get your money back. We will also have the Zoom room for the second day of the Dublin Racing Festival upcoming. Join us for that and enjoy day one of the Dublin Racing Festival. Thanks to Bill. Thanks to Davy.